<coughs> Hi guys, welcome to Plant Park Podcast, your choice hub for book reviews and crucial conversation. By the way, the song in the background is the love song by M.I. Abanga. Okay, so this podcast we've been here since 2021 and we've been reading books and reviewing them here. Books on leadership, self-help books, you understand, personal development, um, relationships, parenting, you know. And even we started doing fiction books as well. And it's been an amazing ride. Thank you for sticking with us and sharing with your friends and with your community. And you know, what we are all about a Plant Path podcast is just saying that adulthood can be a lot, it ain't easy, you understand, like, and there may not really be time to read, but we refuse to, amidst the demands of adulthood, we refuse to run on empty intellectual steam. We would embrace reading, we would embrace lifelong learning. If you don't have time to sit down and read the books ourselves, we would sit down, we would listen to book reviews as we drive, as we you know, go about our everyday life, as we cook, as we are at home, as we are waiting on queues, waiting at the airport. We we'll just prioritize our lifelong learning and infuse it into our everyday life to ensure that you understand we keep learning. That's all we are at Plant Park Podcast. And for staying through, you understand, like thumbs up to you, you understand, because I realize that sometimes when you feel guilty that ah I don't have time to sit down and read the book. But you know, for you to even tune into this podcast, you're already you're already doing well, trust me, than the average person, trust me. Um this year 2024 one of the best things that happened to me well i got married i have new friends um strengthened my old relationships but one of the things that really happened to me that i'm really uh, excited about is that i found adesua oman umukedi you know, she's such a brilliant author and one of our f- like our first set of books that i read is a five-part series called Ginika's bright Ring. like when i was reading this book i was so glued to it Literally, like, as I'm working every day, my re- reward is to read Greenica's Bright Mind. <coughs> I literally couldn't, like, do any other thing. Like, I literally couldn't just wait to finish the books because they were just amazing from book. And we reviewed all of them. Like, book one is Ara. Book two, Ozio, Isioma. Book three, Ife. Um, book four, Ozium, and now the Ginika itself. We are reviewing it today. You know, Yoruba people will say, I can't fall, really, you lori. <laughs> we can't talk about Ginika's bride without talking about Ginika herself. So, yeah, that is what we're going to be doing today. You understand? Um, um, so let's jump right into the podcast. You understand? Um, but before we do so, there's something that my big sister, that for sure, appear to posted on our status um some days ago she was like it's the thing says your purpose isn't just what you do it's a thing that happens to others because when you do what you do you understand so it's not just about doing what you do it's the ripple effect on the lives of other people really that's what purpose is and i'm really grateful for adeso woman in okd yes and leaning into this aspect of our life I, that's what a busy schedule ensuring that she writes and then you know just creates a beautiful world for all of us Let's go on a quick commercial break and we'll be right back to review Sister Ginica. Welcome b- back, guys. Um, it's Plant Park Podcast. Oh, um, Ginica's bridesmaids. Okay, the other bridesmaids, as you know, they are the ones like in the other books Ara Book One, Isoma Book Two, Ife Book Three, Ozama Book Four. Uh huh. So now we're talking about Ginica herself. This book is dedicated to the memories of Kabiri Fubara and Adeni Henry Ogumuyi. Ah, um, so Ginica, she's a fine babe. She dresses well, yet that she's a chick, like always showing up correct. I mean, I need to really say it because I don't want you guys to say I don't like Ginika because she's a bad girl. Let me just say all the good things I can, like, think about her. Um, she's, she knows how to enjoy the life, like, she's pretty much enjoying herself. And, you know, she's from a rich home as well. Um, but one thing that really quickly, st- like, struck me from the early days of her character, when I was reading about the other characters, and even as I was reading her book, this particular book, is the fact that, I felt that, I feel that Ginika is someone that is, like, big on self-neglect. Like, she neglects herself. You know, 
there's it's good to have parents that have money a spouse that takes care of you and everything but there's there's a part in everybody's life that lives that no other person can do for you you understand like no other person can do for you there's some self-working self-development that you have to personally commit to to make your life really like excellent because if you're not careful you'll be you you have money you you'll be well taken care of but you just find out that after like 10 years 15 years 20 years 30 years down the line you just found out that you've just wasted your time looking good and looking fly all the time you never really like poured into yourself that's something i discovered about guinea early you understand <coughs> <coughs> Although Guinea was a fly babe and everything, I didn't see her investing in her career. I didn't see her investing in her personal growth. You know the way Ara is an architect and she's all about her career, her business, you understand her relationships with people. You know that's someone that is pouring herself into something. Um, you see Isioma as well doing the same thing. If I die, you're okay. That's another case entirely. But then, I, I hope you have listened to our own book review, Sha, so you have context about what I'm saying. Please, if you haven't, please just scroll down and listen. And then, Ozioma, you can see that she's, an, she's a lawyer and she's doing so well for herself. But I didn't see this with Ginika because it felt like she was okay. And after she got married, um, she after something happened in her marriage, she actually didn't go back to work. And before you know it, she was a housewife. She wasn't even like she had a baby to take care of. We all have our choices, I know, but I mean, we should pay attention to taking care of ourselves, yes, and beyond the money. Because our, our husband, DK, had a life, had a career, and he was doing very well. Some of the things that Ginika did, self, I felt that they were just as a result of her being so overspoiled and being jobless in a way. So that's my opinion. It's my book review. Anyway, so secondly, Another thing about Ginika is that, so let me give you a backstory. Yes, her father is rich and everything. She's married to DK, you understand? And DK really loves her, like, absolutely loves her. And he just goes to tell us that there are still men that love women, there are women, you understand, that love them absolutely and they will, like, do anything for you. Like, don't even, that's, that's, there's this societal mindset of, ah, Men has come, men are bad people, this, 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 that. There's no good man. Don't let that mindset just even enter your mind at all. There are still very good guys on earth that love, they commit, you understand, and they will do anything for their wives. So D- DK really loves Ginika, absolutely. And then, but one thing about, and then of course she has her friends. You know, for her to have even brought Isioma, Os- Os- I like her value for relationships, really. Ara has been a long time friend. Um, for her to have brought this young mother, she they were childhood friends and they did not, they, they were not in touch for years. They just had a supermarket recently and she was like, she wanted this young mother to be friend <coughs> <coughs> to be on her bridesmaids. She never really even cared about how this young mother did not look the part she understand. And if her, she feels, the uh, Ginica feels like a happy go lucky person. So if at the salon and you know, they just clicked and voila she's on the bridesmaid then ozioma is her cousin and they've just always known each other all their lives so you grab what i'm saying she's just a nice person but i think there's another thing about guinea that i didn't like is that she really she doesn't have so much empathy you know someone that hasn't really suffered in life and everything she's just going i feel that at some point i was like why not just even help this year ozioma is your my friend you understand like help her one way or the other she seems to just be in her own world and be blinded like that and sometimes I make people like that that are like, like, don't you have some kind of compassion? Don't just tell somebody dress nice. You can obviously see that this person doesn't have money to buy clothes. Buy for the person, you understand? Don't just stay in your little world, your little corner, and not experience the world, the world from other people's lenses. Um, so, what I was going to say earlier is that every, Sister Ginika, you are not that sharp. Oh. And this is for everybody that feels that they are very smart. Because every Indian thing in the world would eventually come out in the open. Like, so Ginika was dating her ex-boyfriend. Uh, her ex-boyfriend, yes, like, she has had a long-term, long-time boyfriend. What's the name? Muiwa. And she kept on dating the guy even after she got married. But I like, you know, Bukwan, this old book now, everything now adds up. Because 
Ara had a long time boyfriend as well. Oh yeah, that they've been dating since that ten years. But after the guy messed up and did everything he did, go listen to the book review if you haven't. You know, Ara was just able to, you know, although it was painful, she just snapped her finger like, get away, like you can't treat me like this and go scot free. And she was just all over. Oh yeah, but Ginika just refused to have sense because. How will somebody that is not even investing in your life in any way, like he's not just contributing anything to you, he's obviously just taking away from you and he knows that he has you wrapped around his fingers. Why are you still seeing that guy like like what are you what are you guys doing together? So Ginika was actually still dating her ex-boyfriend, Muiwa, and every single time she's in London, she's in Paris, she's here, she's uh, just sneaking all over Lagos, all over the world to just get some time to spend with this Muiwa guy. And you know what I always tell people, people are watching. So I say this with every sense of um of respect to your personal choices, to your opinions and everything. And not so that because balance is very key. Not so that you live your life in the view of other people and say, ah, people are watching you, you understand that kind of thing. But just to remind you that people are watching you, like you know you know, sometimes when I do this podcast and Sometimes I just see the views. The views may not be encouraging on some weeks. And I'm like, does anybody even see what I am doing? Does anybody even, like, think that... Like, does anybody even see my work, my efforts and everything? I think I have those thoughts in my head. Then sometimes I just go out, boom. I just see somebody say, ha, ah, that's your podcast. Well, don't know. And I'm like, oh, so you saw my status. How come you didn't reply? How come I didn't see your comment? But this person listened. So, like, I, another thing I also observed is that sometimes I see people, once they see an international opportunity or something, an opportunity in the education space, they just send it to me and they say things like, it's education, I don't understand what it is, but once I saw education, I just remembered you and I felt that you may be interested in it or you may know someone that may be interested in it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, so you people just, you people realize that this is what I am doing. That's interesting to know. So people really are watching you because, you know, something also happened to me recently. I wouldn't have, I, I don't think I want to go into details, long gist. But the thing is that, you know, so, some people had to say something to me about somebody, to somebody. And in my presence, like, people were just saying things about me, things, statements I've made online over the past, co- like, one year. Like, things I've said, some things I just say audaciously, or my status, or things that they've even heard me say in Tara person. I'm like, so people are actually listening. People are really, really watching you. Maybe that's something to really think about. And, like, people are watching you to give a testimony about you. That's one recommendations. On the other hand, people are watching you and they know all the bad behavior you're doing. So yes, don't live your life because people, for people's recommendation, people's um, what they call thumbs up and everything. You understand? But remember that people are just watching. People see you, even if they don't do like they see you, they see you. Like on the day you blow, you just remember that uh, you just see people coming out to like say things about ah this person is really in this field do well and you understand that kind of thing yada 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 and if you're not doing well the person people will really still tell you that oh you know they try you so just to remind you that people are really looking at you are you and your good and your bad character so anyway anyway she kept on seeing muiwa and they kept on having sex and which was quite painful because i mean i saw how you know from my own perspective as a reader i saw how DK really likes the gimmick and it was so disappointing to see her, you understand, just throw away DK's love to the mud and, you know, still kept on dating Miwa. That was very, very nice, very not nice at all. So Ginika, she thought she was the smartest babe on the earth and she thought that she was keeping it all shush. But my God, that does not sleep nor slumber. My God, is that it is after good people, that is after taking care of good people like DK, I exposed this sister again in the car and I was so happy because the guy caught her eventually, like because the kid deserves better, honestly. So and I and for me, there's also another part that I was thinking that you know DK is a good guy and everything. And let's say, like, let's say they weren't even married, or or let's say as they were in the marriage, maybe Ginika now got pregnant for Miwa. The guy will not be very hurt, like the typical good guy, good lady, it's a kind person. They will not say something like, ah, niceness, no, they pay, um, stay wicked and everything because that person is hurt. 
that just hurts men. So one thing I will tell you, if you know you are from a good place, like you have a good heart, you care so much about people and everything, you need to watch out for yourself because some people are just selfish. Like Genica was plain selfish in that relationship. She never thought about DK. In fact, she kept on saying, <coughs> excuse me, she kept on saying that she didn't like DK. She was not in love with him. She was in love with Muiwa. And I'm like, you are in love with his money. But you, like the money, you're still collecting the money and using it to fly around the world to see him. To see me wabi, but you don't like DK. So if you're a good person, I feel that I really believe from the depth of my heart. Excuse me, I was drinking water. I'm minding my business. <laughs> so I was drinking that. So if you're a good person, you have to you have to pay so much attention to ensuring that people don't take it for granted. So this is my own personal principle. When is the stage of choice? I'm very brutal. But once I'm with somebody, in sense, once I'm with somebody, I'm into somebody, into a project or anything, I give my all to it. So I see a lot of people that at the stage of choice, they are very considerate. When they now enter the thing, they will not try to be standing up for their right. I'm like, it's too late. Let me give you a good instance. If someone wants to do a partnership with me, or unless I want to select a staff, at that stage, by the way, I plan for we do staff um, teacher recruitment. Very important that I mentioned that to you. So, anyways, I now realize that if you are a what do you call it? What what did I want to say? Okay, so I now realize that like if I want to choose a staff now, the point to really be brutal is when at the stage of decision, you understand? You you see people that they just say, let's employ the person like that now. Mm. When the person enters, they're not trying to be strict on the person. I'm like, this person doesn't have capacity for what you're demanding of him or ah. So what I believe is that at the stage of decision, be very brutal. You want to choose a spouse, you just see people just say, you will change, you will change. When they enter the marriage, they now want to start flexing muscle. Say, no, I don't like it. Somebody that you know that is always hanging out, is always drinking and smoking, you will not get into marriage, you will not say, you can't go anywhere. I'm like, Auntie, calm down. You saw him like this before. So the stage of choice, you understand, is the stage to be really brutal. Because I think that DK, Ginnika's husband, should have been very brutal and screened Ginnika very well before even thinking about marrying her. Now they are married, you understand, now he's not trying to, you understand, put his feet down. It doesn't work that way. The decision stage is always the point to be brutal and all of that. I think that if she did that, if he did that, you he would have you would have not married Guinea. So if you're a good person, you need to watch out watch out for yourself. Um so be kind as well, be good because those are like the fruits of the spirit, kindness, goodness and everything. But you don't have to be nice, like you don't have to because people your bad people say, But that ain't nice, but that ain't nice, but that would dare me. You understand? Like people just expect you to remove their your eyes for them. You understand? Even when they don't commit to you, your own purpose, they just want to have everything their way. That's very bad. That's a bad way to think. So ensure that you are kind to people, you are Christ-like to people, but you also watch out for yourself. Like, don't be, you don't need to be nice. You don't need to do all the niceties. You don't need to. Just be kind. Do your own for God, but watch out for yourself as well. Very, very important. So, yeah, um... So for me, so I, like I said, I don't think that DK had any business marrying Guinea Kasha. She's too selfish. Because okay, so what I said in the earlier part of this podcast that actually happened into their marriage is that in the first year of their marriage, they actually lost a pregnancy. So D, uh, Guinea got pregnant, and then they lost a the pregnancy, which was very very painful to Guinea. Like she cried and wailed, and which you know the sad part instead of her to not cry to her husband. She now went to cry to me while they like they had sex again, which was very painful. She sure didn't get pregnant for years, and later Dikey now found out that she was actually taking birth control pills over the years after that first time that she got pregnant. She started taking birth control pills, so it's like insult upon injury. She was cheating on DK, her husband, and then now taking birth control pills, very very bad. And you know she kept on cheating on on the guy with. Chidima, this Antigonica is a very, very bad guy. But the good part is that they broke up. Yes, you heard me. Like, not the relationship with Muiwa. Like, DK found out about the relationship with Muiwa. And then broke up with Ginika, his wife. 
like the marriage just splits like they went their separate ways and i like that part of dk because dk it must have been a very hard decision for him to make knowing that he had a soft spot for getting her big time like he really likes her but i like the fact that he just damned all these consequences and just you understand like he damned all these consequences and he just broke up with Ginika. And you know, that gave Ginika some time to even think about her life and have some sense. And that's very important. Like, sometimes you just make, need to make the hard decisions and the yes, answer, just do it. Like, them these consequences and just break up with the person and move on. Sometimes you have to do hard things for the soft life. <laughs> like, Alex, we always say, do hard things. Just close your eyes and do it. Nobody will die. The person, like I always say, you will cry, you will convulse, you will feel bad. But you know what happened in the end? You will still be okay. I like that he made a hard decision because if he did not do that, if DK had not made that kind of decision, Dikinika would not have had a brain reset. Broke up with her, divorced her, separated. He didn't divorce her. They actually separated for some time. And then Ginika had some time to think about her life. And then, of course, they got back together, which was good. I like that the story had an happy, happy ending. I also like that the author allowed the story to happen. Not that she not changed her way. Let it, let it happen. Let the bad things happen. Sometimes, like, your back will say, Taba Dale, Taba Daru, Taba You understand that kind of thing? Like, some hard things need to be done at times so that some people can have sense. Anyway, so this book really um portrays um infidelity grief friendships um forgiveness and second chances um marriage is work like but it is profitable work um nothing good just happens like people don't just have bad marriages or good marriages you by your actions we and you by, by your choices will determine whether you have a good marriage or a bad marriage so so you have to determine what's up for your marriage to work so you have to determine what's like what you want your marriage to be i like that ginika finally came back to her senses and she made the marriage work they both made the marriage work and this thing is always a two-way traffic thing dk was interested from the beginning to make the marriage work and everything but ginika wasn't and they pulled out and then ginika was already and everybody was now on the same page very nice um there are still men that love their wife shy don't go and settle for less not every man is a scum. I like that DK is that kind of man that really likes his life, loves his wife. And in fact, Ara's husband is like that. Karibi's husband is like that. Ife's husband is like that. Ozoma's husband is like that. So, they are good men, no? You don't just marry rubbish, you understand? Uh-huh. So, reading really this book was a roller coaster of emotion. Okay, this is my final party word after reviewing the five books in Ginika's Bridesmaid. These books were a lot of coaster, a roller coaster of emotions for me. Um, like the suspense, you know, the drama, the realness in the story. In fact, like I always say, like these ladies are so real in my mind. I hope they are real people. <laughs> And like it's supposed to be a fiction, but I feel like they just come out from the book and come and do paint and sip with me in Korea. Anyway, so in the end, um, Ginika and her husband they renewed their vows. Um, they actually had a baby. They they got pre- pregnant again. You understand? And Ginika and her bridesmaids they live happily ever after. <laughs> the end. Just cut it. <laughs> <coughs> yeah so it's so nice to actually um i i played this song for guinea because this is song like oh my guinea oh nice 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 i'm so happy part of myself and the entire team were plant for podcast for you know putting together this this five part book uh five bar part series it was a lot of work, trust me, it was a lot of behind the scenes work, commitment, and hopefully we'll be able to intervene in her, um, at this woman in Mokedi very soon so that we can we grab, talk about her personality and a lot of things that go into writing this book. Remember that this is Plant Pack Podcast, the choice of for book reviews and crucial conversations. Yeah, um, so yeah, remember to share this episode with your friends. And your, your loved ones, just share within your community. It's worth the share, trust me. It is worth sharing. It's worth sharing. Have a wonderful week. Like I say, if you have a book that you want us to review, 
um, send a mail to plantpathc at gmail.com p-l-a-n-n-e-d-p-a-t-h-c at gmail.com i'll be glad to consider your request um yeah so have a wonderful week love you love you love you love you enjoy your weekend enjoy your day you know take care we are sponsored by Panda Consult, a choice of for teacher recruitment and trainings, mental health training, e-course creation, education consulting, podcasts, and lots more in the education field. Have a wonderful day. My name is Tosin Leaks. Bye, ya. Yeah, you don't have to be alone anymore. Yeah, and I got you.